The neighborhood of Tlatelolco in Mexico City has perhaps seen more death and despair than any other urban neighborhood, with a story going back some 700 years. From the time of the Aztecs to the present day, history has certainly taken its toll on Tlatelolco, doling out tragedy after tragedy. Join me on a tour of this resilient neighborhood brimming with centuries of fascinating history. Hi, I'm Alfie. After a year of heartache and depression with COVID, my father dying and my relationship over, I quit my teaching job of 15 years in order to travel, hoping to find some joy in life again. Come along on the ride with me south of the border, where I share my passion for history, language, and create travel guides for you to use on your adventures. This is Gringo Interrupted. Buenos dias. I am today going to Tlatlelolco to see the Plaza de Tres Culturas, which is a plaza of three cultures. But I'm starting my day here at this Cardin Pasteleria, which is a coffee and pastry shop, which has very nice pastries. And they're playing Madonna, La Isla Bonita. I don't know if you can hear it, but no better way to start off your day than with Madonna. There we go, yeah. Huh? <laughs> you can easily get to Tlatelolco by taking the number three train on the metro. However, Tlatelolco isn't the nicest area and you'll have to walk a few blocks, so you might consider taking an Uber. I, however, am really cheap, I mean, fearless. The story of Tlatelolco begins here, in the Plaza of Three Cultures, called so for the three cultures that have inhabited the site, Aztec, Spanish, and Mexican. The most visited part of the square is the ruins of pre-Hispanic Tlatelolco, an Aztec city-state whose great temple rivaled that of its sister city, Tenochtitlan, just two miles to the south. Due to some internal conflict, the Mexica, or Aztecs, split into two groups 13 years after founding their great city, Tenochtitlan. The splinter group moved north and settled Tlatelolco. The two cities were sometimes allies and other times rivals, but eventually Tenochtitlan grew to be the dominant power, subjugating Tlatelolco. But Tlatelolco remained an essential part of the empire due to it being the largest marketplace in pre-Hispanic Mesoamerica. The two cities would come together again when the Spanish arrived to conquer the Aztecs. In fact, it was here at Tlatelolco where the Aztec and Spanish fought their final battle. Thousands died here in the seventh month long assault that ushered in the European conquest of the Americas. This would be the first and largest loss of life in Tlatelolco, but more would follow. Let's take a look at the ruins. The largest structure, the Templo Mayor, or Great Temple, was pyramid-shaped and according to some, even larger than the Great Temple of Tenochtitlan at 197 feet, going through six stages of construction. I am standing right in between two different phases of construction. Uh, the Mexicas built on top of previous temples. So there would be, you know, one temple and then they would come in, you know, many years later and build on top of it. And then years later, they would build another one on top of that because they believed this is where the energy of the gods was. So they would just keep building and building. This is a unique experience because I haven't been to any other archaeological site where you can actually like walk down in between the different phases of constructions. So this is like super different. When they would uh, build a new temple on top of an old one, they would put some type of offering or sacrifice in some kind of uh, stone container like the remains of the one you see behind me. Um, and archaeologists found artifacts, human skulls, vertebrae, not that those people were sacrificed, 
because they only found the skulls. And also different types of objects like wooden snake sculptures and uh, an assembled vertebrae of a butterfly which was associated with the cult of Tlaloc. And um, thorns from cacti, types of cacti plants that they would use to self-sacrifice, you know, to cause themselves pain and sacrifice to the gods. Beside the Templo Mayor, the site contains 19 structures. Too much to explain in this video, but notice all the markings and plaster that once covered all the buildings. After the defeat of Tlatelolco, the Spanish would use its stones to build the Colegio de Santa Cruz, a church and school whose mission was to educate the natives and train them in the priesthood. It is in fact the first and oldest European school dedicated to higher education in the Americas. Unfortunately, it was closed during my visit. However, the side of the church still shows evidence of Tlatelolco's next massacre, some 400 years later. In 1968, large swarms of student protests erupted in the city, dissatisfied with the heavy-handed government led by President Gustavo Diaz Ordaz. With the Olympics scheduled to take place in Mexico and journalists coming from all over the globe, the government took a hard line against these student protests. On October 2nd, thousands of students, as well as innocent bystanders and children, came to hear the speeches here in this plaza. Soon, helicopters, tanks, and some 5,000 soldiers surrounded the square. An initial gunshot, unclear by whom, but most likely by military-planted snipers in the nearby apartment building, resulted in hundreds of people being gunned down here. The exact number of deaths is still unknown, but can range anywhere from 60 to 300 people. The true story of the incident still remains somewhat of a mystery, but recent evidence suggests the government initiated the attack. The event has left a lasting legacy in Mexico till today, and it is commemorated by this monument, as well as the still visible bullet holes on the church's exterior. Also on site is a museum called Memorial 68, dedicated to the massacre, as well as other Mexican protests and social movements. History's last assault on Tlatelolco would come in 1985, when an 8.1 magnitude earthquake struck the city. Tlatelolco was hardest hit. One of its numerous apartment buildings partially collapsed, killing approximately 300 people inside. Due to the damage, eight more buildings in the neighborhood had to be demolished, displacing thousands. Today, Tlatelolco is a low to middle class neighborhood, and although often plagued by crime at night, it's definitely worth a visit to experience the site where so much important history occurred. Plaza is a little confusing to navigate. Whether you take an Uber or use the Metro, put I-N-A-H-Z-A Tlatelolco in Google Maps, not Plaza de Tres Culturas. This will put you at the entrance to the archaeological site. And then you can walk through the church and then onto the plaza. If you want to go to the Memorial 68 Museum, you can either do that first or you'll have to walk all the way around to get there. You may be able to go through the archaeological zone back to the main street. If not, when finished, walk down Almacenes to Ricardo Flores Magón to catch an Uber. 
If you plan on taking the metro, get off the number three line at Tlatelolco. The station is in the middle of a large apartment complex and the area isn't that great, so consider taking an Uber if you're concerned. Use Google Maps to get to the main road, Manuel Gonzalez. Turn right, make a right on Lerdo and walk through the park Jardín La Perra until you hit Lázaro Cardenas. The archaeological site is on your left and you enter through the small museum.